Today, I'm going to be talking about why everything sucks, but this show doesn't. Let me start off by saying that the cast for the show did an amazing job portraying the characters. They made me laugh and cry and really got me hooked on the story. Unfortunately, like Anne with an E, this story ended too soon, which sucks. But everything sucks, so you know, it's whatever. Seriously though, whoever wrote this show needs a pat on the back, a high five, a cupcake. Like, wow. You seriously put thought into these characters. I would have loved to see them come back for another season, but I guess I can just rewatch it and cry. So, our two leading characters are Luke and Kate. Luke's character is such a sweetheart, like I honestly cried for him because he was so precious and pure. And Kate, bless her little heart too, because instead of lying to him and leading him on, she decided to be honest with him and, of course, herself when it came to her sexuality. Now, like Dairy Girls, this show is also set in the 90s. I didn't go to school in the 90s, but my brother did, so a lot of trends and things kind of got passed down, like the music, the games, and all that pop culture type of stuff. I'm basically old enough to get references and understand the hype or cultural significance of certain things that were going on at the time. So if I sing or squeal at anything during the remainder of this video, that's why. The first thing I want to point out about this show is the age-appropriate casting. They all look like actual high schoolers. This is something I haven't seen much of lately. I mean, even I play kids and I'm nearly 24. I just appreciate it when shows give us this realistic depiction of their target age demographic. It's easier to relate to the characters this way, and not only does this casting allow for relatability, so does the writing. As I mentioned before, this show was so well done. The writers get full props for that. The dialogue doesn't make me cringe, even scenes like this. are relatable. I mean, at least every high school has those drama kids. Another thing that I love about this first episode is that they make use of the cameras being used on the set by Luke. It's almost as if they're creating some sort of Luke vision. Based on the angles he uses when filming, you can get a glimpse into how he sees the world around him and the people in it. My favorite lines from the first episode come from this scene. Huh. You're out of focus. I know. I'm trying to fix that. Everyone feels like that at times, and it's interesting how Kate is referring to what she's dealing with without Luke realizing. Kate constantly feels like she's on the outside while at the same time trying to casually blend in with everyone around her. She's still grieving her mother and knows that her dad has been struggling to make a connection with someone. At the same time, she's trying to understand her attraction to girls and make sense of who she is. None of the characters in this series are simple, and each of them is struggling with their own issues. Even the super cool with a K popular drama kid. They're gonna be fat with a PH. There's Tyler, one of Luke's best friends who has ADD and dyslexia. He wants to be an actor like the kids in the drama club, but doesn't think he can because reading isn't easy for him. Throughout the series, he grows a fondness for the leader of the drama club, Oliver, who takes him under his wing. Then there's McQuaid, Luke's other best friend. He's awkward and knows it, and is struggling throughout the season to gain confidence in himself. He also ends up falling for Emmeline, Oliver's girlfriend. You know, pogo girl. <laughs> These two are just such likable characters and their actors are extremely talented. 
Oliver and Emmeline are an interesting duo, although I wouldn't say their relationship is as passionate as it seems. For them, every gesture, every word is all an act. The two of them are constantly putting on a show for their peers as if their real selves are too much to bear. Oliver believes he's too good for the town of Boring and dreams of someday living in New York. Emmeline dreams of being his girlfriend and gathering as much attention from people as possible. When rumors begin to circulate that Kate is a lesbian, she decides to date Luke, who has a crush on her. Unfortunately for Luke, Kate ends up blurting. I think I'm a lesbian right after their first kiss. Luke is heartbroken, but offers to help Kate figure out her sexuality just to make sure that she's 100% gay. This being the 90s makes it pretty tricky for both of them. Kate tells him that if he starts to fall for her, they should stop hanging out and has him say the phrase, banana slug. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Watching Luke and Kate try to navigate their friendship is so hard because it's obvious that neither of them want to hurt the other. But at the same time, Luke goes into it knowing she won't return his feelings. Still, he does what he can to protect her secret. Although there isn't a second season, I do recommend checking out Everything Sucks. It'll remind you that, yeah, everything sucks, but this show doesn't. <laughs> <laughs>